Hello and welcome to an exclusive Business Standard interview. The Indian economy is recovering from a pandemic-induced contraction in the last fiscal year. While it is expected to grow at a higher rate this year, the medium-term outlook remains uncertain. The question remains, will we settle into a long-term growth trajectory of 7% or can our country not grow faster than 4-5%? to Business Standard sat down with renowned economist and former Deputy Chairman of the Planning Commission, Montek Singh Alawalia, to get answers to this and other crucial questions on the economy. Here is the conversation we had with him in full. So now that we know that we are definitely in the middle of a recovery, what would you say are the immediate steps needed to sustain that recovery and to ensure that it's durable? The three or four things. I mean, look, at any given time, there are a very large number of things that can be done. And usually they're all on the agenda. Uh, but the question is, what are the next most important things to do in the next two or three years? Well, I would certainly say that uh, probably fixing the banking system is the most important thing that we should aim at. Uh, that requires a serious look at what is needed to get the banking system in good shape. And, you know, since the banking system is still dominated by public sector banks, the whole issue of reform of the public sector banks, to my mind, is an important one uh, that we should see progress on. Now, I mean, in one sense, the government has made uh, statements which do reflect a mindset change. I mean, for example, they've said that, look, in the long run, we want to make all the public sector banks private. That's a good, good move. But, you know, what is actually happening is an effort is being made to select two banks and privatize them. I have no idea uh, what are the terms being offered for that privatization. Uh, I'm a little concerned that, you know, if, if unreasonable terms are put forward, then you end up with a failed privatization. And then everybody then says, oh, well, now we tried it, but it's not happening. See, to my mind, uh, some of the things that need to be done uh, are relevant across the public sector banking system. And I have been saying for some time that uh, we need to remove the control which the government presently has over the public sector banks in terms of really too much detailed management. Um, I think the proposal that was put forward by the BJ Nayak committee that if you can't get rid of uh, majority government ownership of the public sector banks immediately, and I can understand that that is politically a very sensitive issue, then you could do quite a lot by simply putting all this equity that you have in public sector banks into a separate holding company, which is run by professionals, and let them be responsible for uh, putting in place professional boards that would manage the public sector banks, and the top appointments in these banks would be made by those boards and would not then go to the government at all. Now, that's a, a bold step. It sort of moves a little bit towards uh, the objective of running public sector banks more like private sector banks. And I think we should certainly experiment with that. I mean, look, if there's a resistance, why not take half the banks and do it there uh, uh, with them and let the other half stay where they are under the control of the finance ministry and at the end of five years see what does better. It's been three decades since the PV Narsimha Rao government assumed office and set in motion radical reforms that changed the direction and speed of the Indian economy. Where do we need to go from here with regard to reforms? Well, I think, uh, you know, reform is a, is a continuing process. I, I think uh, as the, uh, what the Narsimha Rao government did, uh, and I think they did that very well, is they took hold of a whole bunch of things which were interrelated and needed to be handled together and made a lot of progress in that. I think the one area where they didn't make as much progress as they could have was the financial sector. And that remains an agenda item today. That's why I gave a lot of emphasis earlier uh, that we ought to take on board a credible system of financial sector reforms. And we really need to do that uh, if we want to lay the foundation for a stronger growth. So that's one item. I personally think that we need also to uh, think a little more on what should be our longer term strategy on tax reform. 
Because, you know, what's going to happen over time is that uh, in the last several years, uh, the ratio of tax to GDP has not actually increased. Uh, it should have. Uh, the idea of the GST was that it would lead to an increase, but it didn't happen. There's some recovery taking place now, but it's still much below uh, what we would have hoped. So I think we need to look at the GST, and many government spokesmen have said that it is the intention to go to a three-rate structure. I think if that is so, we should accelerate that. You know, these are very concrete steps, and if they are taken, they give a sense that the government has a very clear agenda. Uh, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't wait for the next year. Uh, we should simply go ahead and introduce the three rate structure if it's possible now or outline the changes needed for a three rate structure and sort of say that, look, we're doing the first batch now and the next batch will be done, whatever, six months later. That would be fine, too. Last but not least, in the medium term, can we get back to the high growth years? And if yes, how do we accomplish that task? Well, I have no doubt whatsoever that in, if you talk about the medium term, once the uh, this pandemic is over, we can get back to high growth years. What those high growth years will be is an open question. I mean, remember, uh, the global economy is slowing down. China is also slowing down. So whether we, we at one stage you know, in, the, in the 2000s, we even touched 9%. Uh, you may do that in a recovery, but on a sustained basis, it's not likely that the Indian economy can grow at that rate. You know, other miracle economies did it because they were the first to benefit from uh, a large open world economy, which nobody else was benefiting from. I think had we done it then, we would have benefited. They would have grown at less than 9% and we would have grown a little more. But today, the world is now much more open, much more integrated. So that sort of very rapid growth rate is not possible. However, for India to aim at 7% or even 7% plus, is not at all impossible. We are a lower middle income economy at present. And you know, population growth is slowing down. Population growth is now probably around 1%. So you know, if we grow at, let's say, 7%, the per capita growth which that involves is about 6%. That's the same as 8% if you are growing at 2% per uh, population. So a 7, 7 plus percent growth rate in the medium term, in my view, is possible. Uh, and we should aim at it. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views, and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram, and LinkedIn.